There have been a lot of developments in using transformers for time series analysis, forecasting, and classification. And recently there was a paper that caught my eye, which I thought was super interesting. Uh, the paper is called TeslaNet Rethinking Transformers for Time Series Representation Learning. In this video, I'll just go over a simple overview of what this paper is, try to make it digestible in terms of if you're super technical, you'll be able to understand it. But also, if you're not as technical, you'll still have some things that you can take away from the video, um, maybe even apply in, in your own work um, or, or just learn something from it. Uh, but I think this paper is really interesting because it proposes uh, some new ways of using transformers uh, to handle time series forecasting, classification and analysis, um, while also taking into account uh, noise and irregularities within the time series data. So handling random variations that can obscure real trends within larger time series data sets. Also handling long range dependencies, meaning if you're looking at very, very long term uh, time series data, then this could potentially be something that helps you analyze that uh, more effectively by taking into account farther historical events in the data um, in order to, for example, predict or classify uh, newer events, and also handling non-stationary data, uh, which means if you have data with properties that change over time. Uh, some models will assume consistent patterns within, within the data, um, and as we all know, time series data can also evolve and take on new statistical properties, and you want your model to be as uh, prepared for that as possible. Um, so hopefully this type of architecture uh, will be able to handle those situations uh, more effectively, and it, it does some interesting things to do that. Uh, before I get into talking about the paper, I do want to mention uh, that we also release many research articles on these papers, uh, which we post on our medium. Uh, our medium is Ticker Trends, uh, which is my business. Uh, we operate a hedge fund as well as a data platform for financial markets. So if you're interested in using social or different forms of alternative financial data within financial markets uh, to gain an edge, so we look at lots and lots of online digital data. We find patterns and interesting things within that data, uh, which can indicate um, performance of publicly traded companies in US stock market. Uh, if that sounds interesting to you, check out Ticker Trends. Uh, the, our website is tickertrends.io, um, and our fund is called the Social Arbitrage uh, Hedge Fund. Uh, we also have a Twitter where we post these articles as well, which is at Ticker Plus. Um, but now I'll get into the actual video talking about uh, the TeslaNet paper uh, and some things, some interesting uh, aspects of what's being used in TeslaNet uh, to achieve some of these outcomes which I was describing earlier. Uh, so the first thing uh, that we can start with is the concept of a Fourier, Fourier transform uh, in time series data. If you're not familiar with Fourier transforms, uh, Fourier transforms are just a way to transform uh, for example, a time series data set into its frequency components. Um, and the frequency components just, just means that if there are certain uh, regular patterns in the data or certain uh, amounts of movement within the data, uh, then that will be plotted in a Fourier transform uh, based on the frequency components. So in a song, for example, uh, over the duration of the song, you can uh, do a Fourier transform on the actual audio and then see the different components of basically the different notes or the different uh, parts of the song, uh, which would then be able to help you separate out uh, basically important features or uh, aspects of the data that you wouldn't see just by looking at the, the time series data directly. Um, so what TeslaNet uses this for um, is it uses a Fourier transform um, to get periodicity data uh, or information from the data and then filter out high frequency components from the data, uh, which you can essentially see as outliers in the time series data um, to improve the signal's clarity for analysis. So in TeslaNet, it's using this uh, Fourier transform 
just to basically filter out the data um, and get a more accurate uh, representation of the data, which it can then perform its analysis on uh, to, to try to pick out those patterns and those trends and, and those things that will be useful information um, for its tasks that it will do down the line, whether it be classification um, or anticipation of, of future values. Um, after a Fourier transform uh, is, is used to take out some of these components, then there is some feature extraction um, and an important aspect of how uh, the features are being extracted from uh, the data in this architecture um, is it's using sliding windows or, or kernels to capture patterns in the data uh, efficiently. So it's, it's using feature extraction through convolution um, and it is doing this um, through different uh, periods within the data. Um, so it's not just looking at, for example, the entire data set uh, in one go, but it's gonna look at different sized windows uh, within the data set to try to get out those different components um, and, and that evolution of the different features and important aspects of the data, uh, which it will then use uh, down the line. Um, so this is essentially extracting those important features from the data. Um, and what it's trying to do here is it's trying to combine the strengths of transformers and convolutional neural nets uh, to handle time series data effectively. Um, so it's designed to overcome some of the limitations of these convolutional neural nets and transformer models um, on their own um, and kind of combine everything together, combine these technologies together um, while taking away some of the downsides of each of them. Um, so in the actual uh, architecture itself, there are two aspects, which is the adaptive spectral block and interactive convolutional block. Um, in the adaptive sp spectral block, this is where the Fourier transform is used to take out some of that noise uh, from the data, which is just filtering of the data, um, but basically in a more advanced way. Then in the interactive convolutional block, uh, which is the other big part of, of this architecture, um, there are multiple convolutional layers with different kernel sizes, which is what I was talking about earlier, where it's, it's different uh, period sizes within the data um, and, and multiple layers within the convolutional block uh, to get detailed and broad patterns within the data, uh, both on a long time frame and short time frames, um, which is one of the downsides of just using um, more simple architectures, which might only be able to handle uh, very, very long-term data or very, very short-term data. Um, and in the interactive uh, convolutional block, um, this is also enhancing the, the feature representation um, since it is using these multiple perspectives uh, from the data itself. Now, in terms of results uh, using this architecture, um, as you can see, this is kind of combining the, the benefits of both, which is uh, the convolutional neural network, uh, where you can have really good local dependencies and parameter efficiency, um, and the benefits of transformers, which have really good long range dependencies, not as good local dependencies, and not as good parameter efficiency. And in TeslaNet, with the adaptive spectral convolution, you get the long range dependencies, which means you can do those longer term uh, projections with, of the data. You also get the local dependencies since it's using that uh, adaptive spectral block, uh, which is using uh, the different window sizes within the data. Um, and then also maintaining uh, parameter efficiency, which just means that hopefully it would be more efficient um, than using a, a transformer model on its own, um, while also having the benefits of, of both of these uh, methods combined. Um, and then in terms of results, there are some interesting things. Um, it's not all the, the best results, um, but what you find is that this is very effective in working with classification. Um, so when you see the classification results of TeslaNet compared to GBT4 time series, TimesNet, Rocket, uh, Crossformer, these are all some of the competing uh, models in this case. Um, it's able to outperform these models quite substantially um, outside of, of one data set. Um, 
There is also multivari multivariant uh, forecasting results. Here, uh, time LLM, which is a model which I talked about in a previous video, does outperform uh, TeslaNet, uh, although it is in many of these uh, respective uh, areas here, the second best, which is why it's labeled in purple. Finally, in anomaly detection, uh, TeslaNet is again, very, very strong here, uh, outperforming GBT4 time series um, in a number of, of these uh, tests um, with a higher average than GBT4 time series uh, in this case. Again, these results can always be taken with a grain of salt um, as the person creating the paper uh, can have an incentive to try to make their results look better uh, than other models. So I would always look at how other models perform overall. Um, but I think this is still a very interesting paper uh, that takes some of the downsides of these other architectures, combines them together um, into something that if you're looking for a good classification model for time series data or a, a good interesting architecture for forecasting, um, then hopefully this is something that you could incorporate parts of uh, into your own project. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I hope you find this video interesting. If there's anything that you'd like to add to the discussion um, or correct me on any of my explanations uh, with my own very limited understanding, um, then feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.